What's up guys, Noah Kisser back here for a Blu-ray and DVD update. I don't know if I showed this Blu-ray to you guys or not yet. But if I did, you're just going to have to see, see it again because I didn't ca catalog it yet for some reason. I have not cataloged this title. And I got this probably a couple weeks ago. I don't even know if I sh showed you guys this. But we're, we're, we're just going to get into it. There's only four, four of them here. There, there's only four. So here we go. This is the Blu-ray of Shooter, Shooter and Four Brothers, the double feature. Looking forward to finally seeing these at, at, at some point. I do like Mark Wahlberg, but I'm not some huge action fan. Action movies, you really have to engross me. And uh, action movies, as, as of recently, have mostly been pretty mediocre. So, th there's a Blu-ray of that, Shooter and four, four Brothers. If you've seen these, please let me know what you think. I haven't seen either of them, like I've already said. Uh, when I do watch them, I will review them. Uh, this one, I have seen one of them. I saw the first one in high school. I do remember that much. I, I, I took a couple movie courses in high school. I took History Through Film. Which is where you 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 basically go through history by watching Hollywood movies. So so like say if we we how do I want to do this? If we were recovering the Holocaust, you would watch Schindler's List. Or if if you were covering the Civil War, then you would be watching Gettysburg. We did not watch Gods and Generals. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this one is, and I do remember Gettysburg being a little bit boring, but I was in high school and I had no brain. Uh, but the thing that scares me is it's four hours and fourteen minutes. That that's what I think scared me. And this is not not the Blu-ray. This is the double-sided DVDs. And luckily enough, these were in pretty much as as pristine as a. Double side disc can be. So Gods and Generals and Gettysburg. I do plan on watching these at some point. Probably when I don't really have any anything to watch and I I I think I'm in the mood for it. And then I think I'm gonna watch Gods and Generals because Gettysburg I have seen and I feel like it, it's it's a movie that I have to have in my collection. So there's that. Uh, this next one here, I've been wanting to see it since it has been out. Uh, this is Ken Jeong, Robbie Amell, Bella Thorne, and Mae Whitman in The Duff. I've been wanting to see this one for a good while. I have not seen either film, uh, or yeah, I, 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 I've not seen this film. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Uh, it is going to be a teen comedy that I think I'm going to enjoy. And, uh, that reminds me, Robbie Amell and Bella Thorne actually have another film coming out this year. Uh, do you guys remember the 2017 Netflix horror movie called The Babysitter? Well, they are making a second one, and I think that Samara Weaving is a little bit too big right now with the, the success of, well, of particularly Ready or Not and Hollywood. But she was also fantastic in Guns Akimbo and also really, really good in the straight to DVD, I think, on, on, on demand. And then DVD film from Lionsgate that nobody is talking about. Last Moment of Clarity. Really interesting story and I really like that one. But uh, I think she's a little... Or they she, she wanted too much money or something like that. So I literally have no idea... What is going on? But uh, we we are getting a the babysitter too, which I'm I'm looking forward to. I don't know if it's going to live up to 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 the first one. Now I'm not in into satanic cult movies, but that one was just so much fun, and it it had a crap load of just humor in it. And I think if it would have been stri straight up horror, I think they would have dropped the ball on it. This last one here, I got a bit of a story. First, I need to get a drink of my water. 
Mm. Okay. Ah, I saw both of these in theaters. Now, I say these because I'm going to show you something here in a minute. I saw both of these in theaters. Now, I own all three in this trilogy, and we're probably get, getting a fourth one. I think we are getting a fourth Jumanji movie. Why am I saying both? Well, because I always check to see if my discs are pristine or good enough on, on, until I find another copy. And I'm, I was praying to God that this was in perfect shape. And it was. But not only was it in perfect shape. Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. It also came with Jumanji, The Next Level on DVD. So I felt a little bit bad. I did feel a little bit bad. So I I went back to my local video game store. Uh, come on, pretty much my local video game movie dome. If you are a Cinema Sickness fan, uh, pretty much my local store. And uh, I opened this up, and I'm like, there's no way that these are both in perfect shape. And there's some very, very light scratches, like light, light scratches. But until I get the Blu-rays, $2 for this was a steal. He only charged me a dollar, but that was because he didn't know. He had no clue. He had no clue that both films were in there. Not one clue. So I just decided, hey, I'm going to go back. And give him one extra dollar because that's awesome. That's awesome. Jumanji The Next Level was such a good sequel. And now I can actually sit down and watch all three Jumanji movies. Very, very, well, these two because I've, I've already watched Jumanji this year already. And I don't feel like wa watching that again. Uh, but these are going to be watched very, very soon. And I'm looking forward to to giving welcome to to the jungle I think a third watch a third watch I think a second or third watch but the next level I haven't seen this since theaters and it is going to be a great time now I don't know if they come with any special features or not but uh, stay stay tuned because I may do a do they hold up video because I've been wanting to do that and I've I've been looking for ju just the right movie, and that may be it. Expect reviews this week because we got a lot of stuff dropping. We have uh, Magic Camp on Disney Plus. We we have just a bunch of stuff dropping, but this weekend I am probably going to be watching The Duff because I've been wanting to see see this one, and I think that it is going to be right right up my alley. Very straightforward. But also, my library is sending out holds. So you know what that means? That means 2020 movies. I think every single one of them is considered a 2020 movie. So let's get into it. We are going to be reviewing the rhythm section sometime next week. Uh, I'm not looking forward to this one because I have heard that this film is very mediocre. Which kind of scares me because... I believe I saw the trailer and I was not intrigued whatsoever. Then there's this one here that I that I am looking forward to. This has Liam Hemsworth, Vince Vaughn, Vivica A. Fox, uh, John Malkovich, and Clark Duke. Also written, co-written, co-produced, and directed by Clark Duke. This is Arkansas. I'm looking forward to seeing this one very, very soon. It is one that is available on on Amazon Prime, but I've had a hold on this thing for the longest time. So I wanted to follow through with that hold because I've been waiting literally months to see this movie. Uh, next up is one that I will be reviewing very, very soon. Pro probably, probably sometime next week. 
That is The Invisible Man. I'm looking forward to seeing this one relatively soon. I've been wanting to see this one since theaters. Um, I've heard some people say that this is the best movie of the year. I don't know if it's going to beat Emma or if it's going to beat Hamilton or Guns Akimbo or so something like that. But Blumhouse really made a killing on this movie. A $7 million budget and they made their budget back and then some. A nice profitable film. This one is... Uh, Hmm. Is that a... Okay. This is the Stephen Lee... Is, Stephen Lee. Daniel Weber and Daniel Radcliffe movie. Escape from Pretoria. This is the Blu-ray copy. I'm looking forward to seeing this. It comes with a deleted scene... So, it is going to be a nice, fun watch. I've, I've really been liking what Daniel Radcliffe has has been doing. Because th this guy has been working his butt off, doing all sorts of, like, lower-budget films. Trying to get out of, of, of the, hey, I am only Harry Potter. Which is what uh, Rupert Grint kind of... Couldn't get cast in in a whole lot of mainstream stuff. He is. And as is Emma Watson. And I am going to say this. I really liked her performance in Beauty and the Beast. I really, really did. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, then we have The Current War. This was supposed to come out in 2017. 2017, and it got pushed because it was in the hands of the Weinstein Company. Well, Universal and and 101 Studios got a hold of it, and now it is considered a 2020 movie by my standards. Uh, I'm gonna go by what it it says on Letterboxd. So stay tuned, maybe this weekend for a review of this, The Current War, and also the last one we have here is. One that I remember seeing the trailer for, and I'm like, this could be all right, but I'm just going to wait to get it from the library. And this is Issa Rae, who I believe we just saw in uh, The Lovebirds. This is The Photograph. I'm looking forward to this one. It is probably going to be a generic romance movie, but I remember seeing a review for it, and I think it was Zach Pope who said... It's not that bad, but it's nothing you need to see either. So stay tuned very, very soon for reviews of all of these, along with a, a review of The Duff and the new Hallmark movie. This weekend is a, uh, a film called Wedding Every Weekend. Stay tuned for that review on Sunday night or Monday. And I will see you guys tomorrow for some sort of video. I have no idea what yet, but I will see you guys next time.